Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Med School Mondays with Promo, aka Professor Mohan. So, what are we gonna do today? Today, we're gonna talk about diabetes, diabetes mellitus. Finally, we're at the final topic in our endocrine series and we wanna introduce you now diabetes. Of course, diabetes is a big topic. We're not gonna talk about all of it today, but today's lecture, we're gonna give you a nice introduction, talk a little bit about the physiology of it, and uh, definitely discuss uh, insulin, glucagon, and obviously, we're gonna also compare type one versus type two diabetes. So if you just pay attention over here, again, we got our funny looking uh, uh, organ over here, which is the pancreas. I want you guys to pay specific attention to these two areas over here. Well, we have a beta cell and we have an alpha cell. So keep that in mind for just a quick second. Now, the main important thing is like, you know, diabetes is such a big section. And of course, when we talk about glucagon, we talk about insulin, we obviously need to talk about it at a molecular level. We're gonna save all of that stuff to when we discuss our biochemistry lectures. So we're not gonna go into too much fine detail at the molecular level. I'm gonna give you guys an overall picture of what's going on. So the main, main, main thing you wanna understand is blood glucose levels. Now, blood glucose levels can either be high or they could be low. So if the blood glucose levels are high, what's going on? The pancreas will release insulin and C-peptide. So the beta cells is what actually produce and release the insulin and the C-peptide. Now notice how the C-peptide is in a different color. It's just to remind you guys that this is endogenous insulin that's been created in the pancreas. So of course, every time insulin is secreted, C-peptide is released as well. And we talked about this in our previous video, actually a couple of videos ago, endocrine video number 19, when we talked about insulomas and glucagonomas. So it's very, very important to remember, C-peptide is also produced when insulin is produced from the body, okay? So now that the insulin is out here, what does it do? It takes the blood glucose levels and it's gonna put it into the cells. So the purpose of insulin is to take blood glucose and lower it by providing that blood glucose to the appropriate cells. On the flip side, what happens? Glucagon. Glucagon is produced by this cell over here called the alpha cells. The alpha cells, again, are a part of the pancreas. So the glucagon recognizes when there's low blood glucose levels. Now what does it do? It acts on the appropriate cells, it acts on the cells, and it breaks down glycogen into glucose so that there's glucose in the blood. So again, these are all biochemical pathways we're gonna discuss in the biochemistry section. So, just a little recap on this. Insulin is gonna take high blood glucose levels, put it into the cell, and glucagon is gonna take glycogen from the cells, break it down into glucose, and get the glucose back in the blood. So it's a counter-regulatory sort of process which makes a lot, a lot of sense. Now, what is the concept of diabetes? Of course, all of you guys already know this, but in just in case you don't know this, or in case it's a little confusing, or in case you wanna teach it to your five-year-old nephew or niece, it's so simple. Insulin is not doing its job. Well, what do we mean by that? We're saying that either the cells, either the beta cells over here have been destroyed and not releasing insulin, or another way is the beta cells are releasing the insulin, so insulin gets released. However, the cells that it's supposed to act on, these cells are insensitive, so they don't want the insulin. So what happens? The blood glucose levels stay high in the patient's body, and that's not a good thing. So symptoms we talk about are hyperglycemia, high blood glucose levels, the patient's gonna be urinating a lot, so we say polyuria. Patient has polydipsia, they're urinating a lot, they're gonna feel very, very thirsty, so they're gonna keep drinking, drinking lots and lots of fluids. Polyphagia, lots and lots of food intake as well, and you're also gonna see weight loss. So the patient may be losing weight inappropriately. So now the thing is, we know that there's type one diabetes mellitus and there's type two diabetes mellitus. Well, what's the difference? The difference is mainly in the pathology again, correct? The pathology, like we said, so in type one diabetes, we're saying there's an autoimmune destruction of the beta cells. So if you remember, when I said the beta cells are not producing the insulin, that's called type one diabetes. If the beta cells are producing the insulin, but the insulins don't act on the cells, that's called type two diabetes. So in type two diabetes, the cells are resistant to insulin. What is gonna be your main treatment? For type one diabetes, you have to remember, insulin is the only way you can correct the situation or help the patient live a normal life. With type two diabetes, we're gonna talk about various hypoglycemic agents, but eventually in a patient, they may need insulin as well, okay? Patient information is a very important thing as well. These are clues that will be in your question stems. You want to kind of pay attention to these things. But again, I wrote over here, usually, 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 and I wrote over here as well, usually. Usually means most of the time, but not all of the time. 
So in type 1 diabetes, we expect a young patient who is relatively thin. With type 2 diabetes, we usually expect an older patient who is relatively obese. But when we say usually, that means the flip could also occur. Type 1 diabetes could occur in an older obese patient. Type 2 diabetes could occur in a younger thin patient. But this is just some generalizations. Genetics. Genetics, what does that mean? We say that when there's a patient in the family who has type 1 diabetes, will the next person, will the son or daughter get type 1 diabetes? We're saying with type 1 diabetes, it's very weak. However, with type 2 diabetes, very, very strong. So that means family history is very, very important when you think about type 2 diabetes, okay? HLA association. HLA association is very, very important. Again, this is part of our immunology sort of a subtype we have to learn about. But we talked about this when we talked about the thyroid gland as well. HLA DR3 and HLA DR4, highly, highly associated with type 1 diabetes. With type 2 by diabetes, no association. So another important fact to memorize. Glucose intolerance. Glucose intolerance for type 1 diabetics is very severe, whereas for type 2 diabetes, mild to moderate, okay? And then we got insulin sensitivity, very high for type 1 diabetes, and low for type 2 diabetes. Now we get in back to some of this important, important stuff over here. Complications, very, very important. Of course, that's why we're gonna take a few lectures to actually discuss all of this. But type 1 diabetics are prone to developing diabetic ketoacidosis. Now it's a very, very serious condition we're gonna talk about in a future lecture. And with type 2 diabetes, again, another serious condition, hyperosmolar comas. So make sure you memorize those important two facts for next week's lectures so that you already are one step ahead of the game. And lastly, you wanna pay attention to the histology. For type 1 diabetes, we got islet leukocyte infiltration. For type 2 diabetes, islet amyloid polypeptide deposits. Okay, again, this stuff is gonna be on your exams. These are the things that are gonna give you the marks. These are things when you see those exam questions, you're gonna quickly pick it and just go to the next question so you save yourself time as well as stress. So that's it guys, that's it. I know it was a quick lecture on diabetes. You probably expected a lot more, but I wanna promise you that if we break it down like this, it'll actually be a lot better for us. So next week, what we're gonna do, we're gonna continue our discussion on diabetes. We're gonna break down both type one diabetes, type two diabetes, and uh, in the meantime, what are you guys gonna do? You guys are gonna like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, share the video with your friends, don't keep all the knowledge to yourselves, and definitely comment on the videos below. Let me know what you like about the video, let me know what you wanna see in a future Med School Monday video. So until next week, have a great week, and we'll see you next week on Med School Mondays with Promo.